Having left Exeter, the river widens to become an estuary. And here, in the early hours of the morning, you can be treated to one of the most beautiful sounds that I know. The songs of many wading birds moving to and from their feeding grounds. I found out more about the human history of the area when sharing a fascinating conversation with a lifelong resident of a tiny picturesque village called Cockwood, situated near where the river meets the sea. Oh, that, that, that's me and mother. <laughs> <laughs> down, down on the warren. Right You've just shown me a picture of you as a baby at Dawlish Warren. So, can I ask you, how old are you, John? I'm 80 now. I was born here. Always lived here. So you've got you've got a, a personal knowledge of how the ancestry has changed and yeah. Well, you see, when we lived in Star Cross, I must have been wait, and that was in the war. And I used to go out with mother, picking cockles, mussels, and winkles. And then she used to take them to Exeter on the black market for food. I can remember when they bombed Exeter, father took me out in the night and we stood on the railway line and you could hear the old Messerschmitts and bombers with mmm. And then the next thing you see all the Exeter fire. Up, you know where the Limpston camp is? There's a the mud outside, that's called Greenland. And that's where the whale boats used to moor out of season. Because they used to go catching whales. You know Nutwell Court? Well, what they call Darling Rock. Well, in round the corner there was a, a bay, or a little small arbor basin. And they used to boil the blubber in there till the the gentry at Nutwell Court stopped it. It's a fascinating subject to go on for hours with this one. <laughs> <laughs>